Welcome back fellow Clashers, or if it's your first time here, thank you guys so much for stopping by. I appreciate your time, and I promise to do my best to try not to waste it. Okay, so we're talking about an overpowered, underused card in Clash Royale, and now I myself am guilty of kind of hating this card and pretty much ignoring it for a long time, but our buddy Metab down here from Full Attack has been using this card with huge success, just annihilating other players with, you guessed it, Sparky. Now, I know what you're saying. I know what a lot of people, I don't know, Sparky is one of those polarizing cards. People either love it or they hate it. I see just as often in my comments, you've got to nerf Sparky as I hear, oh, please buff Sparky, it's useless. And so I, I think that when you see that, that's automatically, to the Clash Royale team anyway, a really good sign that they've done something right. Because players that know how to use the card can make it super powerful, can do a lot of things with it. And players that don't, oops, okay, so yeah, minor battery issues there. Players that don't know how to use it, either don't know how to counter it, they feel it's useless, or they get wiped out by it. Either way, I am actually learning to love Sparky. Now, I probably won't put it in my deck permanently, although you will see some battles towards the end of this video where I use it with mixed results. But for now, I'm loving it because, well, again, it's just something I haven't tried before. Here, Metab using it correctly. He's getting the Sparky in behind the Giant. Unfortunately, the Giant gets absolutely melted by that Inferno Tower, and Sparky doesn't get there either. He throws up the well played, as all full attack members are completely good mannered at all times. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, so back to the battle. Just about into double elixir. Now again, Metab's been using this deck for several seasons now. Uh, we see this constantly, he's sharing these replays in chat, and I'm kind of like, eh, yeah, okay, Sparky, whatever. So I finally thought I would give it a closer look and talk to him about it, and surprisingly, and here's the key to this deck, and it's actually the opposite of what I expected, and that is, don't focus on using Sparky to take down a tower. In fact, in most of the replays that I've seen and in most of the battles that I've experienced now with Sparky, it's the giant, giant archers, giant mega minion, maybe even giant skeletons that get in there and get the tower down. Very rarely are you going to see the Sparky be the one blasting the tower, of course, it's not a bad thing when Sparky gets in there because it's going to almost one shot a tower. We'll definitely take it in two shots on one of those crown towers. But more often than not, again, it's going to be the giant that gets in there and gets the job done. He's the sleeper card. In fact, this episode should probably be about the giant because he will put out so much damage. Even a naked giant, a giant by himself, can do over a thousand hit points to a tower right here. Okay, so that was the aberration from the rule. Metab finally gets the Sparky in right at overtime and grabs the win. But like I said, you don't have to win with the Sparky. The Sparky does great things on defense as well, especially in the day and age of Executioners, Royal Giants, Giants, of course, and the occasional Golem. Okay, more than occasional. So, all right. Another battle with Metab here, trying to uh, stop the Valkyrie and Prince push. That is an unusual combination right there. The Prince is going to get to the tower, but you'll notice he didn't get in with a charge. So that was good defense from Metab. Now, once again, the Sparky, not the win condition card in this deck. It's really actually the Giant. Uh, for me, almost every single time, it's been the Giant that gets into the tower rather than the Sparky. The Sparky occasionally gets the job done, but Metab, well, let me tell you, not that he spams the chat with replays. Okay, he, he kind of does, but it's, it's, not, it's not a bad thing. In fact, I encourage you guys to encourage your clan members to share as many battles as they can. It is one of the best ways to learn, especially if you want to learn a specific deck, Ask your clan mates to share, share, share those battles, and eventually you get a hang of how to pick up the strategy. Uh, Metab's biggest tip, again, was a couple of things. Well, his first tip was, don't focus on Sparky taking out the tower. Second tip was, uh, you don't ever need more than one Sparky at a time. Later on, you'll see uh, old Galley put two Sparkies up at once. I thought it was epic. I mean... <laughs> Whenever I've got a Legendary in my deck, anytime I can get two of them up on the screen at the same time, I think that's a win-win situation. Okay, at least a win. No, it's a win-win. Two, two Legendaries. All right. 
Moving on, so Metab here, he's got the Sparky that's going to be a pretty good counter to the P.E.K.K.A. Now, of course, the P.E.K.K.A. will annihilate the Sparky should you let her touch it, but at least maybe you've got that distance that the Sparky can get a shot or two off, especially if you squeeze something... Oh, Rage. You squeeze something like the Giant in front of the Sparky, and this isn't going to work out for a great push, but I've noticed this is the classic push. The Sparky with a Giant in front with the Archers in behind. That seems to have a lot of success. Here, at least, Metab stops the P.E.K.K.A. from getting a single shot on the tower, and uh, we'll, we'll ignore the crying eyes. Okay, so in comes another Sparky. Giant is ready. We're down to the last 30 seconds, but on the right-hand side, the Valkyrie and the Prince. So split lane push. Look at that Giant, though. Beautiful. Grabs everybody's attention. He's now kiting the Valkyrie and the Prince. That could backfire. But no, Sparky is right there to finish off the Prince. Skeleton Army does a great job. Sparky is still up. And this is absolutely dangerous. Is Metab going to put a second Sparky down? He did. Wait, he told me one Sparky was enough. He's got two. I don't get this. Anyway, in goes the Sparky and the Mega Minion. Great Fireball. And that P.E.K.K.A. is going to get finished off by the second Sparky. So... I guess there's exceptions to every rule. Oh, the tornado screws up the giant in front of the Sparky deployment, but check it out. Sparky! Never mind. Sparky didn't get there, but once again, like I said earlier, it's the giant archers and mega minion. Metab calls good game. They melt that tower down. No Sparky required. NSR and Metab with another win. All right, you guys, so this is kind of what inspired me to start looking at Sparky. He showed up in my shop, and I was able to buy three of them and get him to level five. And now I've never really used the Sparky in trophy or ladder play, but I thought I would give it a try. Here it goes, 4,500 gems to buy the gold to get Sparky up to max level, level five Sparky. And uh, so what we do... We take Sparky and we go out into trophy hunting. Minor detail though, I'm at 4,600 and yes, I'm sorry about this, J Jason, j 12 son. Yeah, he's not happy, but it's going to get worse. I mean, it's bad enough that he's an 11 facing a 13. Now, I will tell you this. I mean, come on, it's Gala Skills. I've lost to level 11s before as a level 13. Okay, it happens. It's probably happened to most level 13s. So those guys that won't admit it, they're just too embarrassed to say so. But nonetheless, we're going to give it a try with our brand new Sparky Giant deck that we've copied straight out of Metab's playbook. Now, of course, my bad luck would mean that the very first opponent I face is using a Lava Hound, which normally is just disaster for me right here, trying to figure out how to deal with and effectively deal with the minions. Really, why? I picked up the Fireball, which would have wiped them all out. Instead, I throw a Zap. I mean, that's like... Rookie, that's like second year Clash player mistake, number one. You don't zap a minion horde when you have nothing else anywhere nearby to finish them off. That was just completely a waste. All right. Anyway, I'll, I'll file that one away for next time. Okay, so trying to decide again. You guys can see I'm just like, I can't decide what to throw in. I've got archers going in all by themselves up there. That's a complete waste. Yes, another Lava Hound and the Mega Minion coming in. Going to try to squeeze the Giant in front and see how this works out. Now, his Mega Minion is going to focus on my Giant, but because of the, just the massive hit points that that Giant has, he's going to shake it off, get all the way to the tower, and Sparky gets there as well. Together, they take the tower down, and uh, that felt good. So, again, also some level disparity there. Simply having that maxed out Giant gave me a huge advantage over this player. So, I'm admitting right there that had this guy been level 13, things probably don't go as well. But hey, it was a nice, easy way to start out my very first battle using Sparky in months, if not longer. And uh, definitely looking kind of lopsided right now. So we're going to go ahead and try to press for that three crown. You can see the opponent again going with the Lava Hound and the Mega Minion. Now you wouldn't think this deck would be that effective against a Lava Hound deck because you only have the Mega Minion and the Archers but check out the fireball value. The fireball value right there. Just epic. And once again, he's got this Mega Minion. I'm going to finish it off this time. That was probably smart. The Mega Minion got finished off by that little zap spell. Sparky can't quite make it, but guess who got to the tower? That's right. We've got another giant there. 
throwing in another Sparky. This game is all but over. They are getting into this tower. Sparky fires off another one. Six hit points left. And I could have fireballed the tower for some reason. I just thought this would be so much cooler if I just roll a log gently in and finish off his tower. There it is. That's a hard counter to any six hit point tower. And my very first Sparky win is a three crown masterpiece. Or not a masterpiece. Now I will admit to you guys, I played several more battles and had a lot of luck using this deck. Uh, very, very briefly, let's take a look at a few of these battle highlights and you can see that I was just killing it with this deck. Again and again and again, Giant getting in there, Sparky coming in. Most of the time though, it was the Giant getting the towers down. Sparky nowhere to be seen in a lot of these battles. The Giant, the Archers, the Mega Minion are the ones getting it done. The occasional three crown and it just felt good every single time. So yes, I definitely think that Sparky, one of the most underrated cards in the game, but let me know your opinion down below in the comments, but don't forget, opinions are like butts. Everybody has one and they all stink. Thank you guys, you are the true hashtag Galifan members. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Hit that subscribe button, share the video with your friends, and yes, please do come back again tomorrow for more full attacks. Galidon, your bud may stink, but mine certainly does not. It smells like roses. <laughs>